What's up, everyone? It's the end of 2023, so you know what that means. Another list of my personal favorite albums that came out this past year. If you ask me, the last video I made on this back in 2022 is personally one of my favorite videos I've ever made, so I want to turn this into an annual tradition on my channel. And just to preface, I don't listen to a buttload of music, so I'm just going to cover my top 10 albums that had come out on top of all the other contenders. Let's jump right in, but first, I want to kick us off with a bunch of honorable mentions, starting with... <laughs> Pink Tape by Lil Uzi Vert. I'm never expecting anything profound from Uzi's music, but I think this album in particular is just an overall fun mess. I like how a number of the songs are heavily rock influenced and others sound like they're straight out of an anime intro sequence. It's very all over the place, like it has its highs and it definitely has its lows, but I'm typically expecting that from an album with 26 songs. I tend to gravitate more towards the louder and angrier tracks pretty often, with my favorite song on the whole album being The End, which is really not actually The End because there are three more bonus tracks afterwards as if Uzi got a little post-credit epilogue going on or some. <laughs> Did you know that there's a tunnel, un tunnel under something? I don't even know. This title is so long by Lana Del Rey. I'm not gonna lie, I don't listen to Lana's music like that. I only ever listened to her first album, Born to Die, and I don't even think it's that bad. I just remember laughing at this meme for so long and I figured, why don't I just check out our new one? And here I am putting in my honorable mentions. I'm not going head over heels doing backflips over this type of music like it's the best thing I ever heard and it's the only thing I listen to, but I do really like a lot of these melodies and her singing is amazing. The songs in the second half are what I tend to play the most, but I'd say the best one is Peppers. And I'm not biased just because that's my cat's name, minus the S. Business is Business by Young Thug. Bro's in jail, and he's still dropping more than Frank Ocean. This is nowhere near his best album, but I still think it has a lot of great highlights that are so hard not to come back to regularly. This is that type of music I'm blasting in the shower if my ego's been inflated a little bit. This is definitely that music I'm rolling my windows down to. This one is constantly in my rotation for my feel-good music, and my favorite song is Money on the Dresser. Heaven Knows by Pink Pantherus. This one is pretty cool. I think it overall encapsulates the soft core, girly, bedroom, dance, pop vibe that Pink Panthers is going for. Ever since day one, back when her song Pain was poppin', I knew she was capable of a fully fledged out album, and this is a great debut with some great production. My favorite song, despite Benny X producing one of them, has gotta be Feel Complete. Ooh Rapa Ya by George Clanton. This album has got some of the best collection of world-building instrumentals I've heard in a while. I took a trip to Peru this past summer, which I'm going to mention a few more times throughout this video, and I downloaded a bunch of albums I'd never yet listened to just because there were a lot of points where we didn't have any service. I ended up spending a lot of time with this album, and now whenever I bump it, I always relate it back to that vacation. Great experience. Clanton is a great musician and looks like a super cool dude that I honestly just want to be friends with. It's pretty hard to pick just one, but honestly, my favorite song off of it is probably either Punching Down or The Last One For You, I Will. Oh, Red Moon and Venus by Caliucci's. I've been getting more and more into R&B recently, like S.O.S. by SZA has quickly become a favorite of all time album of mine, for example. I just think the genre shares a lot of the same qualities I tend to favor from vocalists in the rap music I listen to, and I think Caliucci's is a great place to start. The aesthetic of this record is honestly summarized exactly by whatever the cover entails. Warm colors and butterflies, honestly. Any of these songs are super easy to just put on in almost any scenario. Great hooks, great songs, great album. My favorite track is Moral Conscience. Maps by Billy Woods and Kenny Siegel. This type of rap is definitely a little bit of a wrestle to get into because of how grimy and unfamiliar most of it feels like, but it has such a unique sound that feels addicting to listen to. Billy Woods is so interesting to me because at times, well, okay, not at times, almost all the time, he's barely even rapping. Bro's just talking spoken word over these dirty, disgusting beats. No hooks, but the chemistry is all there. I really do appreciate music like this. I think it deserves way more recognition, and I'm really glad it exists. My favorite song is Soft Landing. I was purposely listening to it the moment I landed in Peru on the plane. Nobody Knows What Will Happen Tomorrow by Bad Bunny. I had just recently got into Bad Bunny, and I definitely say I'm a fan of his music now. If I had listened to him just a little while longer, I would have at least mentioned his Un Verano Sin T album in my last end of the year list, but it's all good. We got this one too. 
the whole thing feels pretty simple and straightforward. I don't think he was trying to do anything crazy, trying to redefine Latin pop, reinventing the wheel or anything, but rather he just sticks with some minimalistic music this time around. But honestly, I don't have a problem with that at all. I actually like a lot of this track list and I find myself jamming out to it more than I realize. Mi canción favorita es Vuelve Cande B. The Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse soundtrack composed by Metro Boomin. I, see, <laughs> I don't know if this even counts considering it's made for a movie and not an actual studio album, but Metro Boomin has quickly become one of my favorite producers in recent years. He's been doing his thing for well over a decade now, and I'm glad he's getting to call the shots and be the main man behind the soundtrack to arguably the best animated movie I've ever seen in my life. And to such a mainstream one too, he really outshined himself here and with incredible features from so many collaborators. Every time I listen to it, I just get transported into the world of the movie. It's like a Miles Morales and it just feels so great. My favorite song is Nonviolent Communication. James Blake is so fire. All right, guys. And for my last honorable mention, we got... Um, all right, moving on to my actual top 10 list. Here we have the best of the best, the cream of the crop that this year had to offer, in my opinion. Here's what I've been listening to the most, starting with... I was in and out, time don't make sense no more. Number 10, La Hai by Sampha. What a beautiful record this is. Sampha is back at it again with his magnificent voice on his latest album, La Hai, and I personally think it's great. Everything about it is so precise and on purpose. This is a great example of having the director behind the scenes gaining full control over everything. Every nook and cranny was premeditated and executed exactly as imagined, and I think Sampha did a great job with that. So many luscious hooks and melodies accompanied with incredibly talented writing. It's great. My favorite song is honestly the first one, Stereo Color Cloud, Shaman's Dream. Hey. Number 9 for All the Dogs by Drake. Don't get me wrong, this latest record from Drake is definitely a little bloated. I think what he does nowadays, and not even just Drake, but a lot of mainstream artists who overwhelm their track list to the max, is just doing it for the streams and not actually putting songs on the cutting board. It's for sure quantity over quality, like he's throwing a bunch of stuff at a wall just to see what sticks and what doesn't. I am very well aware of that, but I just can't help but like the majority of the songs here. Like, for me, a lot of it sticks, actually. The weak points aren't even weak enough for me to dislike anything strongly, and the highlights are just fun to me. I'm not looking for any lyrical miracle, but I have been bumping this album frequently ever since its release, so I'm happy with this placement. My favorite song is Another Late Night with Lil Yachty. The editing in the music video is insane. Number 8, 10,000 Gex by 100 Gex. I, I, I mean, I get why people hate on 100 Gex, but their music is good. I mean, I, I don't know. I've been a fan for a while now, and I've never gotten bored of their polarizing and experimental work. But I will say, if their albums were any longer, then I can definitely see myself not listening to them, at least as much as I do now. They always know never to overstay their welcome. It's like a quick transaction of short nugget of loud noise and good music before I start getting a headache from how hard it goes. 757 is probably my favorite song on this one. Number 7, Quaranta by Danny Brown. I think Danny Brown is genuinely an incredible rapper with such an amazing catalog under his belt. When I knew he was supposed to release this long-awaited sequel to Triple X, I was more than ecstatic to say the least. With that being said, this still took me in for a surprise, even though I already had high expectations for it. Firstly, the whole thing doesn't even feel like a sequel. It sounds like a maturing, coming-of-age story when compared to its predecessor. Maybe that's just because he's not rapping with his iconic high-pitched vocals in many of these songs, but rather feels more grounded and serious when discussing different topics like change, love, gentrification, and more. Although there are a lot of deeper cuts here that are sonically slower than his typical music, he still sprinkles in some absolute bangers that we are used to. I really like this whole thing. It's representing this shift and growth in his life that's being reflected through his music he's putting out. My favorite song is either Jen's Terrific Vacation or Celibate. <laughs> Number 6, Let's Start Here by Lil Yachty. It's kind of crazy to see how far Boat has come in his career despite many of his other collaborators in the music game having become obsolete years ago. At least that's how I feel. Him and all of these what seem like up and coming artists were always topping the charts back in that vibrant 2015-2016 era, but here he still stands doing his thing, remaining in people's conversations and I respect that. Especially with this album, even its name implying a new beginning to his work. He's switching focus, starting this new Lil Yachty cinematic universe, and after hearing this, I'm all here for it. He's not reinventing any music, a lot of people are under the misconception that he's creating a new genre, but rather he's reinventing his work. From front to back, this album is seamlessly mesmerizing and always an experience to listen to. My favorite song is Should I Be. 
Number five, Utopia by Travis Scott. This album is great. I'm not gonna lie. I'm glad Travis is back with some music after a five-year wait of, since Astroworld, especially releasing it over the summer was such a good move, giving me and my friends fantastic memories with its rollout and overall experience. I already reviewed this album back when it came out on this channel, so definitely go give that video a watch if you haven't already. I go in-depth on each individual song and what I think of them. Most of my takes I still agree with, like I haven't changed my opinion on it too, too much, but just to give you a little update after, I think both Circus Maximus and Lost Forever fell off hard for me. I think the shock value of Westside Gun's surprise appearance went brazy, but now I'm not really messing with it that much anymore. I think he overstays his welcome on what feels like a longer song than it actually is. But that's about it. The majority of the rest of the songs I still really enjoy. I stopped rating albums out of 10 because I feel like I'm doing art a disservice by labeling it with a structural number which is honestly ironic because that's what my entire channel is based on. But I did promise you guys in the end of that album review video what I would give it. And I'm a man of my word, so I give Utopia by Travis Scott a 8.5 out of 10. <laughs> Number four, Fountain Baby by Amaray. What an immaculate mix of Afrobeats, pop, and R&B. This album is such a nice collection of music from front to back, bringing me some of the most colorful ear candy of the year. The way Emma Ray uses her voice to match the upbeat production's energy is so infectious. I catch a lot of this record's hooks and choruses being stuck in my head on the day-to-day -day grind just because of how good all these songs are. This was one of the albums I saved on my trip to Peru, and I'm so glad I gave it a listen. I had been hearing good things about it, so I figured why not? And pop this bad boy into the cassette tape in my head, which really doesn't exist and is just Spotify, and never looked back. My favorite song is Co-Star. Oh, Number 3, How Do You Sleep At Night by Tizo Touchdown. Tizo is quickly becoming a new favorite up-and-coming artist of mine. He hasn't broken into the mainstream label yet, but my friend Joey Kane put me onto his music a few years back, and seeing how far he's come since then, being on Tyler's latest album, Travis, and now Drake? I'm so proud of bro. I legitimately enjoy this debut record of his more than the rest I just mentioned. He's such a refreshing sound in music, and he unapologetically makes it his own. He's so unique, and that's what I like in music, making his work groovy and even funny at times. I'm super excited for the future of his career, and I look forward to what he has in store for us next. Whether his album is a more repolished version of this one, or even if it's something completely different, I cannot wait. My favorite song here is definitely, uh... Number two, Guts by Olivia Rodrigo. Okay, I know what you guys are going to say. But before you go writing your angsty little hate comments, hear me out. I got a little rebuttal to your initial thoughts. This album is perfect. I've been saying this since it came out, and I will continue to say it indefinitely. My friends do not see the vision because, oh, it's too girly. Oh, I don't like her voice. No. For what it is. Firstly, it's such a vast improvement on her last album, Sour, which I also enjoyed, by the way. But this one just, she takes every resource that she has within her grasp to her advantage and writes some of the catchiest and best written music I've heard all year mixing rock and pop together. Yeah, sure, maybe I don't relate to a single thing she says throughout its entirety, but I don't have to. Am I relating to a single thing rappers are saying in trap music or drill? No! But do I thoroughly enjoy the music and appreciate what it's doing for its dedicated audience? Absolutely. With all that said, my favorite song on here is Ballad of a Homeschooled Girl. Okay, and for my number one pick of the year, the best album to come out of 2023, in my opinion. If you know it, comment down below what you think it is. It is... <laughs> Scaring the... <laughs> by JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown. You already probably saw this coming, considering the rappers I tend to favor. And this one is taking two of the best in their respective lanes, combining them at what feels like both of their peaks, and ultimately coming out with the best album of the year. I don't know where to begin. We could be here all day. I guess, firstly, we can start with the production. JPEG Mafia's ability to conjure up some of the most impressive and out-of-this-world instrumentals from samples no one else would be creative enough to work with should be studied. He made the beats to all these songs, and with one of these, this was no FL Studio. His dynamic alongside Danny Brown, who, you know, I already gave my recognition to earlier in this video in the number seven spot, was outrageous. And this has become one of the best rap albums I've heard in recent years. Even the writing behind this album is a commentary on not following the crowd and doing whatever you want to do, no matter how weird it is. Listen to whatever music you want to listen to, and in this case for Peggy and Danny, make whatever you want to make, despite it not being considered traditional. My favorite song on it is the title track. 
But anyways, those are my favorite albums to have come out this year. I listened to more, but I wanted to keep it short and really emphasize how truly exclusive and special these ones are. If there are any I missed that you like, feel free to comment some recommendations you have for me. I'm always looking for some new music to listen to, and I'm really open-minded to whatever it is, so let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this sort of video, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. But anyways, that's about it for me. I'll see y'all in the next one. See ya.